Bowling. Here. Crombie. Here. Jacobs. Here. Jokish. Here. McElroy. Here. Polinski. Here. Stevens. And Stocker. Here. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have the approval of the May 25th minutes, May 25th, 2021 minutes. Polinski I'll move to approve. Polinski approved it, and, I'll, and Crombie will second it. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Are there any ads, deletions, or changes? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. That passes. Matt, are there any citizen appearances or public comments out there? I think Don was going to email those, so if you didn't get those, I, I have nothing else to give. Okay. Thank you very much. I know we have somebody for the council meeting later on, but uh, if there's none... Okay, next we'll move on to council liaison and committee reports. Anything to report? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to unfinished business. Only item is consideration, discussion, and possible action on returning to in-person meetings. I would just like to start out by saying um, I've been in constant contact with Don McDermott, our IT director, as you know. And uh, the hurdle that I've spoken to Don about has actually been the technology necessary to have a hybrid meeting. By that, I mean IT is great with either all in-person or all Zoom. But when you start to mix and match, that's where the difficulty comes in. And especially on the media center side to bring in everybody into one flow. Um, the latest information I've gotten and checked again with Don this morning, uh, I'm sure he's going to be happy not to hear from me uh, so often, but uh, the technology is now in place. So that is no longer a hurdle. And with that being said, I would like to open it up for discussion and see what this council's uh, appetite is for either getting in person, getting together in person, or leaving it as Zoom. I'm sorry, I'm not able to see right now. So, Polinsky has okay. her hand up. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mary. I'm sorry. Um, I, as, as most of you know, I've been anxious to get back to in-person at City Hall. I kind of struggle with the virtual. I, I am getting used to it. Um, I certainly will go along with whatever the majority wants, but um, I, especially as we start to move closer and closer to the budget time, I just think it would be really good if we could do that together. Okay, thank you. Alder McElroy is uh, seeking recognition, uh, Council President Stocker. Thank you very much. Alder McElroy. Thank you, Alder Stocker. Um, do we have the second floor open yet in it, City it Hall? Is, uh, it is not open to the public yet, Alder McElroy. Is there a date it's going to be? Uh, it really could open at any time. There's not a lot of staff up there. Um, and we're not going to be inviting staff back probably till July 1st. And that's because we're going to be renovating that second floor as far as um, the cube space. So really opening the second floor wouldn't wouldn't change much. And so we've just kind of left it at, left it closed. Okay. The reason I ask is once we open the second floor, I think it's going to be more difficult to have the public on zoom mm -hmm. um i would i would suggest that if we open the second floor the public is probably going to want to be in person i will do what everybody else wants to do but we might want to wait until we can provide uh the second floor for the public to come in 
Okay, thank you, Alder McElroy. It looks like uh, Attorney Leonard, you have your hand up. I do, I just had to get unmuted there. So um, Alder Stocker, I, I understand uh, that we've got at least one or two potential options. I wanted to uh, potentially pose a third one. Um, we could be in person, we could be virtual. Uh, some communities out there do have a hybrid format where they are having uh, the common council be in person and still providing the ability for attendees to come in via, uh, I think the technology of choice is uh, the Zoom meeting. So uh, I think we, we might want to even consider a third option. Um, the uh, Municipal League is uh, presenting some guidance and has uh, presented the idea that uh, Robert's Rules is uh, in its 12th edition, putting out there some interesting commentary and suggestions for um, uh, Wisconsin communities to follow. So I'm certainly happy to provide anyone that's interested in uh, either a copy of Robert's Rules in its entirety, or uh, just copy the relevant pages uh, that would help you make some decisions about your meeting formats. Uh, communities are, are, as well as the school district, I understand, are, are moving back into a variety of formats. It seems that hybrid is the most popular. Uh, we are, of course, looking at questions that are relevant to uh, quorum and physical uh, as opposed to virtual presence and whether we are compliant with the Open uh, Meetings Act, which, uh, of course, is of primary importance. We can't have a meeting unless we comply with the act. So uh, I'm happy to bring forward any kind of materials, either to yourself or to the body as a whole, that would facilitate your discussion. I think that uh, as Mr. Oppenheimer pointed out, and as uh, Alder McElroy pointed out, it's uh, certainly, you know, with the renovation going on, your hand is not uh, pushed to make this decision. You have a little time. Uh, and I, I think there are some options that we could get together and on the table for you as we move through the summer and work on that uh, renovation on the second floor. Thank you, Mark. From a legal standpoint, by um, having the public come in via Zoom when everybody else is meeting in person, there's no repercussions that would be imposed on our city in that regard, would there? I would want to make some minor changes to our ordinances, as well as put together a policy that we are going to be able to adhere to, uh, so we consistently apply the rules and regulations across different kinds of meetings. There's always uh, potential for problems, uh, Alder Stalker, uh, when we are relying on the uh, internet, uh, electronic uh, formats where things can go wrong, we can lose a quorum, things like that. If all goes well, the policy and the format as intended wouldn't give rise to a negative legal consequence, but something can always happen and has a way of happening, right? That's, that's, that's just life. So we would put together the best policy and procedure, make the changes to the ordinances, and you would thereby be able to have uh, quorum present, quorum present and virtual, and the option for citizens to attend in person uh, or to attend virtually. Now, of course, we also have to make a decision about what sort of social distancing, what sort of uh, technology uh, accommodations we're really talking about making. If we're having plastic dividers or, excuse me, um, uh, any kind of divider at all, uh, if we're having uh, headphones, microphones, that kind of thing. Uh, we, we like the idea of coming back in person. So we have the togetherness piece. So we're all working together. There also quite likely will still be some accommodations we have to make. So it may not be the kind of warm environment we envision once we look at all the options, but uh, having uh, the meetings together certainly does add value as I'm hearing from some of the alders. Thank you very much, Mark. Sure. Alder Yokish. Um, I'm curious as to what the Dane County Board, the City of Madison, City Council, and even our own school board is doing. Uh, Alder Stocker, I, I 
think you might or have information on that. Uh, I think Mr. Oppenheimer may also. Uh, I don't know uh, presently what Madison is doing. I can certainly find that out in pretty short order. Uh, some of my attorney colleagues that are in Madison, either Mr. Bartson or Mr. Zuck may have information, uh, just sort of anecdotal information about what's happening in Madison. I don't want to call on them and you know, outside of the context necessarily that they're here tonight for, but they might just have some anecdotal information, which if they'd be willing to share, I'm certain we'd be interested in hearing. Yeah, thank you. And, and um, I'll be okay to answer your question, at least from our school board, they are meeting in person. However, no public. Public is uh, coming in via another option such as Zoom or, or SurveyMonkey. So, uh, but they are meeting in person and they are socially distanced in a conference room. Um, for those of you that have not been in council chambers in a while, um, on our dais, there are plexiglass dividers. Uh, Don and I have talked about um, doing headphones um, and other technology to make this work. So I think uh, as far as any, any hurdles, whenever we would wanna move forward, we would have everything in place to make that happen. So I guess what's the comfort level uh, right now? And when would you like to see this happen? Alder Polinsky, um, I just, I, I'm comfortable now. Um, and I understand that there might be some that need to wait a little bit. Um, we are now at the beginning of June, we could say starting with our council meeting in July. Okay, thank you, Mary. Alder Crombie, you have your hand up. Thank you, Mr. President. I also had my little handshake that's on there too for the longest time, but that's I'm okay. Sorry. I know you can see it. <laughs> um, I would like, I like Alder Polinsky, I would like us to, to meet as soon as possible in person. Um, I'm not think I'm thinking maybe July too. Um, I actually feel that I don't feel comfortable yet. Of course, having people having the public come in yet, unless we can space them out, you know, like maybe six or seven, you know, six feet distance. Um, but I feel that the public should probably we should be able to um, have the public come in maybe the end of July, early or August. Um, I, I always look at this with this COVID-19 as not going back to the new, not going back to the normal, but I want to move forward. And I think that it would be a really good idea to have the public being able to have, you know, change our ordinance with the, the public being able to be a hybrid um, audience and where people can come in or they can go on or be online because there's a lot of people that aren't able to make it to the meetings, you know, because of childcare or they're taking care of a parent. Um, this just gives them more opportunity then to participate in the meetings if they want to. But I'm open to whatever everybody else thinks too, so. I couldn't agree with you more. I think uh, we might get better participation from the public if they don't have to find a, a sitter to come in and talk to what they want and are, have the ability to, from home, um, come in with their public comment. Alder Jacobs, you have your hand up. Yeah, sure, to that end, I think that we could we could always make that a practice hereafter, right? We always have that available to people. I think that's a great lesson from COVID. So like Mary and, and others, I, I'd like to come back as, as soon as we can. Um, but I do have, at least for myself, I have two conditions. One is that Everybody feels comfortable about coming back. I don't want anyone to be forced to come back because actually, I don't know if you all know this, but we have an ordinance that says that the police can come to your home and pick you up as an alder and bring you to council. <laughs> and um, I don't want to see that get enacted. By the way, I was the only one who voted against that. <laughs> but here's something else is, and I think we have to do the honor system on this, that I don't want to be in a room with any of you fools who aren't vaccinated even though I am. And I don't know if we can enforce that or not, but um, I'm tired of hearing people saying, oh, this is a personal choice. That's like saying a stop sign is a personal choice. It's not about you and me. It's about all the other people at the intersection, right? 
So I don't want to, while I may be quote immune to this, I don't want to pass it on to anyone else and I don't want anyone else to pass it on. So unless you all can verify or not verify, but at least assure me that you've been vaccinated, then I don't have any interest in seeing any of you other than on the screen. Thank you, Elder Jacobs. Yeah, and I think uh, it, it's, it's my feeling, and I can't say for certain that most of us or all of us are vaccinated, but HIPAA laws prevent me from actually asking that question. Alder McElroy, you had your hand up. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Alder Jacobs, that is a good argument for allowing um, the public to zoom in versus coming in because not everybody can be vaccinated. That's all I okay. had to say. Thank yep. you. Alder Bowling. Thank you, Alder Stocker. Um, I wanted to just bring up the concern that um, Mayor Esser brought up last time we talked about this in the city staff and wanted to check and see if that was still a concern. And I'm less savvy in regards to who needs to be there um, with us when we're meeting and if there's any way around um, making facilitating that. And I'm thinking post July sounds the logical. Paul, I think that was a question for you possibly. Yeah. I'm sorry, somebody's asking me about uh, the proclamation. Um, so my concern has always been the unintended consequences, the things we don't appreciate. And as I recall, Aaron Staff was going to talk through this reopening process, weren't they? And have some thoughts for us as to where the, in any issues? Well, I think we were going to look at two things in particular. One was the legal aspects, which okay. I think Mark has given a, kind of an overview of that. And then the second piece was the technology aspect oh, of, okay. of, of, right. of it as to whether it could happen or not, both from a legal perspective and a technology perspective. I was at the media center today, and I know Jeff Robbins was very excited that they, with the mass mandate expiring tomorrow, they were going back to normal and was very excited about that. So I would guess if he were here, he would say that isn't an issue to the people that might be recording this. And the other people that are, um, I think, affected behind the scenes are probably somebody in the IT staff. And they seem to have come to grips with that too. So I think maybe Tina, the, the reservations I have probably aren't there any longer. You know, I certainly don't feel the way I did about it a month ago. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, City Attorney Leonard, please. I, I don't know if this arises to the level of a concern, but certainly a consideration. Um, given the size of the room and given that we're giving the public the option of appearing uh, in person or by Zoom, if we are to desire social distancing, we need to consider how many members of the public can come, which means that we would then be, by association, excluding some people. We also need to consider how many staff members we would want to have in the room. Typically, we have, oh, Aaron, I don't know, half a dozen staff members along with the uh, members of uh, Common Council. Uh, and we would also need to make a plan for those folks that we now refer to as panelists, those individuals that we refer to as panelists are the essential ones who are you know, presenting at a given time during the course of the night. So again, I don't, I don't know that any of this is insurmountable, but these are all con considerations that I've talked with Aaron about, and we do have concerns about, and we wanna have a, you know, a cohesive, coherent plan going forward. One of the big ones is, you know, under the Open Meetings Act, we want to make accessible all meetings to as much of the public as wants to attend. So I, I could envision some situations where there'd be competition for the ability to attend, right? So, you know, those full house nights, I, I'm not quite sure yet how to deal with those. The, you know, the um, controversial subjects, the emotional subjects where people want to come and be heard. So, um, that's, those are my thoughts. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Certainly. Okay. Alder Yokish. 
Well, I think this has been said a number of times, but I do, uh, as the discussion's going on here, I am a little uncomfortable with the, uh, we, at times we have a number of city staff who are here and, you know, I'd like to give them the option of uh, being able to attend virtually. I, I don't know, you know, it's a, it's a little different. Uh, the public can choose to come or not to come, but, you know, an employee, you know, uh, I know that was an issue we brought up earlier, and and we have quite a few employee, uh, quite a few staff members that attend some of the meetings. So, I think we need to give that some thought. And plus, I'm I'm still of the opinion that, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to be the first one out there doing these meetings. If the Dane County supervisors are uh, still meeting virtually in the city of Madison and some others, you know, uh, I I. I, I'm on the side of caution on this one. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. I'm going to give my opinion. Um, personally, I was hoping that we would be back together around the 1st of July. Call it Independence Day. Mm -hmm. That analogy. Uh, we would look forward to getting back together, having an option as a hybrid where initially, you know, taking baby steps at first, we would have the public join via Zoom. We and eventually have chairs positioned later on when we invite the public in that we could socially distance everyone. Staff would be on an as needed basis. However, they would be welcome to come in via Zoom and actually give them the option to be Zoom even if they're needed to be in. So I was, uh, hoping that, you know, given a month out that we could have everything in place to actually make this happen. So I'm going to make a motion that we resume our in-person meeting, the first meeting in July, and initially have the public come in via Zoom and staff attend as they feel safe or as needed. McElroy seconds. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Alder Jokic. I guess I would, before I uh, jump on, on this, I'd uh, like to see the details ironed out, I think, of how this would exactly work for staff and, and everyone. That's my thought. Yeah, very good point. And I think this is giving staff the direction as far as a date. Otherwise, we're looking at a moving target. We could be talking about this you know, forever. So we've established a date, the first meeting in July. And I believe, Mr. Oppenheimer, if there's any reservations as far as what staff sees as a future hurdle, you would get back to us right away. Is that correct? I think uh, that would certainly be the case, Alder Stocker, but I think what, what Alder Jokish is, uh, is bringing forward, and I think Attorney Leonard had talked about as well, is there may need to be ordinance changes that go along with this potential change. The meeting that we are referencing that would need to happen on the 15th then, so between now and the 15th, all of the ordinance was, would have to be drafted, approved for the 15th and any remaining processes would have to be in place uh, for that first meeting in July. So we have one meeting essentially to iron out any process concerns, ordinance concerns, those types of things. So I think that was kind of the, the overall uh, thought process there. If the council thinks that it can get it it, it done. Uh, certainly, City Attorney Leonard can weigh in whether the, the appropriate drafting can be done uh, for that uh, to occur. So that's that's one meeting between now and go live, essentially. So I guess I just wanted you to be aware of that. Okay, just one second, Alder Bowling. Um, City Attorney Leonard, do you feel that is a unsurmountable request? I think it's challenging given that the guidance that I I would want to bring forward is uh, I think it's a little bit more complicated and it's a deeper dive than we're talking right now. Um, 
you know, I, I, I hate to say, I hate to say no, I would just say that I think it's challenging to make it by the first meeting in July. Um, I would be more comfortable. I don't have the dates. It's the first meeting in July, somewhere before the holiday weekend or July 6th, July 6th. Um, you know, I can work with outside counsel on this. As some of you know, I've had a, a niece, a knee surgery recently, and I've gotten bad news that uh, apparently the surgeon uh, that I chose my first time around missed a couple of days in uh, med school. I have to have a second surgery to <laughs> to essentially do what he should have done the first time around. Oh. So I'm not uh, I'm, I'm I'm not I, I make light of it. I'm disappointed. Uh, but it looks like the person who uh, will be remedying the initial work is going to want to do something in the next couple of weeks. That doesn't prohibit. I mean, obviously, my strong suit is uh, is up here rather than my, you know, rather than my knees. So I, it won't prohibit me uh, from doing work. But I, I know Aaron likes to have me at 100 percent when he can. And uh, there will be some challenges. I will do my best, Alder Stalker, if the body uh, says by July 1st, we'll do everything we can to, to meet that deadline. It certainly would be more comfortable to make it uh, a little bit later in that month of July and would also sort of dovetail well with uh, staff coming back post uh, renovation. So thank okay. you for hearing me out. I'm sorry to hear about uh, the additional surgery. Well, thank you for that. How many ordinances are we talking? Well, you heard uh, you heard um, Alder Jacobs talk about the ability of the sergeant at arms to come and get uh, get you if you're not present. So certainly, we have to change the quorum uh, ordinance. Uh, there is uh, an order of business that we probably want to look at. There's also these uh, numerous potential policies that you would want to at least adopt by a resolution. Uh, I, I, I'm talking about firming up the way that we do our online meetings, our virtual meetings, and sort of um, having it not rise to the level of an ordinance per se, but at least as an adopted resolution that we have a firm policy going forward. Okay, thank you. At, at least one, probably two ordinances and a detailed policy to be adopted by a resolution. Okay, thank you. Alder Bowling. No, I was just looking at the calendar and there's the first 15th and we don't meet the 29th because that's the last Tuesday in June, correct? Yeah, we haven't, that's correct. Okay. Because I was just wondering if we could give to the 29th. I don't know. I, I think what I'm asking for is a special meeting on this just to give appropriate time to really do all this. But it's, I don't know. I was just noticing it. So I wanted clarification on our meeting dates. And maybe we could, yeah, to your point, um, very good point. Maybe what we could do is leave it as um, if we'll, we'll leave it as set right now. But if if uh, City Attorney Leonard needs additional time, possibly it may mean a, a special meeting for 10 minutes or whatever on the 29th. Okay, Alder Polinsky. I don't we just move our start date back at back to um, July 20th, take it the second Tuesday, the second meeting in July. Uh, and then we don't have to worry about it. And it gives more room for everybody and makes everybody more comfortable. We'll do the first meeting in July virtually. The second meeting in July, we'll be back in quarters. Okay, that sounds good. So we would uh, I'd have to ask Alder McElroy, can we uh, amend the motion? I am good with that. Okay. Okay, so the motion now sits at the second meeting in July. Alder Crombie. You're on mute, Maureen. I was just gonna say that before we amended this, that I've been looking up different municipalities in Dane County to see who's going who's going virtual and who's going live. I have only found one that's live and that's McFarland, um, like Middleton, Monona. Uh, I think I went up, looked up Verona, they're all still virtual. Um, and I know like 
the capital area regional planning commission that I'm on, they're not going to go, they're going to be virtual at least until July. Um, and, um, I just, I think that what Alder McElroy said to, to, um, have it be later in July is then I'm going to be supportive of this. Otherwise I would not have been supportive of this at the beginning of July, because I think we need more time. Okay. Really good. Look into this. And city attorney Leonard, I think you saw, I saw a thumbs up that that would work with you. I, I think that makes sense, uh, Alder Stalker. I think that gives us time to do uh, mm -hmm. our best work, to do a thorough job. We want to get it right the first time. We don't want to put anybody in harm's way. We don't want to have to backtrack from a more uh, aggressive approach. I, I think that casts us in our best light. I'd appreciate the extra time. Okay, thank you. And will this include, just curiosity, will these ordinances also include committees and commissions or just that council? Would, well, it, it would be my intent, uh, intention that it covers all uh, bodies appointed, including citizens and ad hoc committees. Typically, uh, per Robert's rules, which we follow uh, with a few exceptions, the rules of the parent organization tr are, are uh, transposed over to all of the child organizations as well, committees and, and, and boards. Okay, thank you. I just didn't want you to go through work a second time if we then move to committees and commissions. Alder Yokish. Um, I'd like to offer an amendment. I think we have an amendment to an amendment, but uh, mm -hmm. um, to ask if Aaron could develop uh, a policy uh, to minimize the number of city staff that need to attend these meetings for to protect their safety and other concerns, is, yeah. if that's yeah. appropriate. Maybe, maybe to avoid the amendment process is uh, understood, Alder Yokish. We will, uh, we will make sure that we minimize staff presence. I think we can. I think we have one motion that was uh, we use our infamous friendly amendment. Right. <laughs> right. So I think we just have one motion. But I think I think Alder Yokish's uh, a statement is being taken as a firm direction by all staff members present. Thank yep. you. That, that however you think is appropriate is good with me. Thank yep. you. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? So the on the table, Alder Bowling. I just want clarification on one detail to this. Does this mean so we're talking about the parent and the parent structure to the other committees? Does this mean that we are this body here is required to attend face to face? Or is there still the optionality for virtual to do the hybrid amongst this group here? Among the council members? Right. If we would have the option to virtual? Yeah. I, I believe, this is just my belief, that we should have the option to virtually attend. Uh, there's going to be situations where people are going to be for some reason out of town and to risk not having a quorum if they have the ability to come in via Zoom, I think that is an option that we would want to keep on the table. Now, I'm not sure. <laughs> I knew I knew <laughs> City Attorney Leonard's hand would go up. I'm talking a lot tonight, I'm sorry. Uh, one, one, uh, one option that uh, I'm aware of uh, that could work is limit the number of virtual attendees. This would come under the heading of policy. For example, well, the, uh, there's no case law in Wisconsin that requires physical presence to um, qualify for a quorum. There is case law in other states that assert that. Uh, one of the possible solutions would be to, our quorum is six, obviously, is to have quorum established in person with virtual attendees not counted for purposes of quorum, but still being able to vote. That's that's an option. Now, one of the concerns I have with something like that is I don't want to necessarily, but there someone would have to be the uh, overseer of that. And probably I would I would put forward the council president as the one who would say, well, you know, two alders are already attending because either on vacation or a medical need. Uh, we've got to have the rest of us in person. So 
I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is these are some of the concerns I'd have and, and want you to be able to think through uh, what your preferences are before we you know, make a decision to come back. Yeah, I, and I would think, you know, if there's situations where, let's say, for example, some remote possibility where someone's having knee surgery again, you know, that uh, that might be an option where, you know, they're still able to attend and keep up on everything. Alder Bowling. Okay, so the reason why I asked that question is I'm also thinking about the committees and the people who are on those committees and their level of comfort. And so that's where my my questions really driving towards because there's a lot of committees there's a lot of people that we haven't consulted so just wanted to get that out there i think i think that has to be a vote within the committee how what their comfort level is okay any other discussion on this one if not uh, jennifer the way i understand it now is the second meeting in july we're targeting as the in-person meeting. Correct, July 20th. And July 20th, and um, we will allow virtual for the public, and we'll make that available. And then um, as far as staff, the as needed, that feels safe in attending. Otherwise, virtual is the way to go. I'll be okay. You're on mute. You're on mute, Bob. Uh, I'd like to follow up from uh, Alder Bowling's uh, uh, point. I think uh, I wonder if we want this just to apply to the common co council meeting and the committee of the whole, rather than the co the committee the other committees, which are comprised often of more of private citizens than uh, uh, city council members. Uh, we could start it with that. I, I think she raises a, a good point that. We are doing this without, for a lot of committees, without uh, uh, talking to the committee members of others. So we could just have this apply to the those two and and wait on on the others. That's that's a good point. And are you making the amendment? Well, well, sure, maybe, I'll make an amendment to that. Okay. Well, maybe a question just before we do that, if we yeah. could, is is uh, City Attorney Leonard is. If the council changes the ordinance allowing these this type of practice uh, that that we've been talking about, does it require that the other committees follow the same practice, or does it simply allow them to follow the same practice? So, so meaning that each committee could decide for its own whether it was ready to go from virtual to a hybrid approach, or does the council by taking action is it mandated? Uh, that was going to be my think, question exactly. Are we? Can we I, make the ordinance flexible enough? Mm -hmm. I, I would have to to give that some thought. I think my my first answer would be that, as I mentioned before, boards and committees, subcommittees, are creatures that are expected to follow the rules that the creator committee is is following. In other words. If we're doing something, we expect our boards and committees to do something. I can draft around that, but I think it becomes cumbersome. And we also have, you know, a variety of sets of rules that, you know, we don't have any standardization. Uh, I understand the idea that being overly controlling uh, is is abhorrent to some, but having consistency across our boards and committees, I think makes for effective management of their business and for the ability of citizens to count on what they're getting into when they come into a public meeting. It would, it would be my preference that we have a, a consensus amongst our boards and committees about how they want to proceed. And in, in light of not being able to get consensus, I will try and present something that allows you to have the best of both worlds. So, because I, I want to please the council, but I also want to make people happy about their participation in committees. So you'd have to give me a little bit of room. I prefer the, uh, the option to be left open as direction and I'll come forward with two things rather than making a motion that's going to be hard to untangle later. Okay. Um, if, that's, so, if that makes sense. So right now we are looking at everything however um are all committees com and uh, 
I'll Commission. try to draft around. Yeah, I what I would the direction that I would receive right now is that uh, top to bottom, this rule would apply. But I, what I'm committing to do is to look for an alternative in the work that I bring forward that would allow the uh, Common Council to give some uh, some more control to the committee members. Yeah, and would make them each committee could decide on their own when they felt comfortable. I, I like that approach. Okay, so we're, we're looking at everything right now, and we're looking at uh, the second meeting in July, July 20th. If, if so. I could maybe make one more comment, uh, Mr. President, is that yeah. you, you, at this point, from the council's perspective, nothing's left your control. And I guess I want to reiterate that what you're essentially saying to staff is, we are interested in moving in this direction. Please draft legislation that would help guide us in this direction. Yeah. So I guess I just want to, as far as the committees, you have not, uh, by this action this evening, you've not changed anything in their, in, in their lives, so to speak, in, in how the committee operates. What you're simply saying is, this is the overall direction we'd like to go in. Please bring us back some ordinances and policies that reflect that. We will evaluate those and make a final determination. So I, I guess I want to lighten, lighten the pressure a little bit on you as far as getting this perfectly right right now. Thank you. As always, appreciate your, your comments and direction. Okay, Jennifer, I think we're time. it's uh, time to... Take the vote, please. Bowling. Aye. Aye. Crombie. Aye. Jacobs. Aye. Jokish. Aye. McElroy. Aye. Polinski. Aye. Stalker. Aye. The motion carried seven to zero. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Okay, next item. New business, we are going to adjourn into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin state statute. First item, 19.851G, conferring with legal counsel for governmental, for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to possible action regarding legal issues and strategies surrounding the recovery of losses incurred in the gas explosion. We are also going to be talking in closed session about 19.851E, and that is deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investment of public funds, or in this case, uh, or conducting other specific public business, wherever competitive or bargaining Reasons require a closed session consideration of collective bargaining between the city and the International Association of Firefighters, AFF, Local 311. So I would like to have a motion to go into closed session, please. Polinsky so moves. McElroy seconds. Sets. Your choice, your choice. Okay. We, yeah, Jennifer, you can choose. We have a move and a second. Would you please take the roll? Foley. Aye. Crombie. Aye. Jacobs. Aye. Jokish. Aye. McElroy. Aye. Polinski. Aye. Stalker. Aye. Motion Matt, would you carries. please let us know when we're in closed session? This meeting is being recorded. You are back in session. Thank you, Matt. Okay, we are coming back into open session, and there will be no action taken on either of the items at this time. 
Okay, next item, report of the council president due to the time constraints here. Um, I'll forgo that. However, since it's on the agenda, I do wanna just make note uh, for those new alders and I'm classifying uh, Alder Jokic and Alder McElroy under that along with Alder Bowling. Um, as we prepare to come back into in session, you should have access cards to get into the building. Just make sure that you have those. If not, uh, please see uh, Don McDermott to get those. So report of the city administrator. Just a few quick items, Mr. President, that are of uh, importance. Uh, one is that the public health orders expire tomorrow. As you know, uh, our instructions to uh, city staff are as follows. One will follow the guidance of public health and CDC, so we're not requiring uh, masks of those that have been vaccinated or the public uh, coming into the building. And so uh, we won't be checking status of vaccinations, whether it be public or uh, city staff. Those that would like to wear a mask are welcome to do that, and, they, and there will be no uh, comments uh, regarding that choice, that each will be uh, make that choice themselves. Um, so we've said we would follow the guidance of public health and CDC from the beginning and are continuing to do so. Uh, wanted to make sure the public was aware of that. Uh, second items, COVID-19 vaccine clinic is on Thursday at the Element uh, from 4 to 8 p.m. So I wanted to offer uh, that opportunity uh, to those that are interested. And I think that'll do for now, Mr. President. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Alfheimer. Okay, next item, referrals. Any referrals? Okay, seeing none, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, everyone. And we are done and see you in a few minutes at council. Yep.